There are so many of us committed to improving the lives of the youth in our communities. The In It For Youth podcast is a place for us to come together, from professionals who work with and serve youth to those that champion issues affecting children, to community advocates and stakeholders, and insightful young minds too. The In It For Youth podcast is a tapestry of voices united by a dedication to youth well-being and empowering the young generations of today and tomorrow. I'm your host, Jamie Gale, and I'm so glad you've joined me on this team that is In It For Youth. Hello, and welcome back to the show. Before we get started, I really want to thank the In It For Youth listening community for the strong support you've given the first episodes. I really appreciate your DM responses and your shares. It feels really great to be connected to so many of you who are working hard on behalf of kids. If you haven't already given the show a rating, a review in your podcast app, I'd really love it if you could take a quick minute to do that as it's one of the most important ways to support the pod. Okay, let's get into today's conversation. Thanks to my guest today, the next generation is going to be far stronger than kids of the past, literally. I'm joined by Eric Grimm today. Eric is the Director of Operations at ETS Performance West Madison, a premier sports performance facility that trains athletes starting at age eight. Eric has worked in the fitness industry for over 10 years in a wide variety of settings from large health clubs to high schools, and now he has been at ETS for about three years. Eric is an NCSA certified personal trainer, and he has his degree in sports management and marketing. I met Eric about two years ago after my teenage son begged me to let him try this strength training program that he claimed all his friends were doing. And I will be honest that I dragged my feet on adding yet another activity to our family schedule. And I was kind of unsure why he needed this when we already belong to a gym, but he insisted that we go for an athlete evaluation. And I am so glad that we did. It turned out that there was very good reason that my son's friends were indeed all doing it. And since then, all three of my kids have been in Eric's programs. I am really excited for you all to hear about the special work that goes on in Eric's gym. It is a really unique space that is empowering kids in many ways. Congratulations on all of your impact on youth well-being, Eric, and welcome to the podcast. Wow, thank you. That was quite the intro. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Well deserved. It really is a really cool place, and I am excited to kind of show more people what you have going on there. So Let's start with your current work with youth athletes. Can you fill us in on what ETS is and what your role there is? Yeah, absolutely. So we are a sports performance gym or facility. So we train athletes of all ages, all sports, all ability levels from age as young as eight years old, all the way up to the college and even professional level. So our younger group is eight to 12 year olds. So with them, we're not doing any weights or anything, but just working on building a foundation of athleticism, working on a lot of those basic movement patterns, working on running form, speed and agility, and everything that's going to relate to all different sports, as well as some of the like injury prevention type of stuff in a fun but challenging atmosphere. So that class is pretty fun. A lot of a lot of high energy with that that younger group. And our older group, so starting at the age of 11 or 12 is when we would consider some strength training for kids. And as you know, every kid develops at different speeds. Kids are hitting adolescence and puberty. Some kids kind of burst through that a lot quicker. Some kids are a little slower developing. So we always want to meet a kid where they're at. So based on their current ability level, what sports they're involved in and what they're looking to get out of it we kind of tailor an individualized training program for them. Our strength sessions are kind of like a group workout, but each kid has their own individual program. And then we have multiple coaches out on the floor that are going to kind of guide them and coach them throughout the workout, making sure their form is good, making sure they're setting up each exercise and executing each exercise to the best of their ability. So can you explain a little bit more about how you customize the programs to each kid? I mean, my kids love their sheets. So can you kind of explain what that looks like? Yeah, for sure. It's funny you say that your kids love your sheet because every kid is like, oh, here, can I have like this on my next program? 
And it's tricky because, yes, you want to give them some of the exercises that they enjoy and that they're good at. But I also explain to them, hey, you know, the things we're maybe not so good at or we don't love, those are the things we really got to work on, right? So we got to fill those empty buckets and work on our weaknesses. And that's what's really going to help, you know, make them more well-rounded and, and all that good stuff, making sure no stone is left unturned. But to kind of answer your question, you know, at, at a younger age with a lot of the younger athletes, it's just building a really rock solid foundation of like movement quality. We're not really worried about doing heavy weights or anything. It's like really controlling the movement, having good form and going through the full range of motion. Then we gradually progress them along. But then after, you know, they kind of have all those boxes checked. Once they're more maybe on the high school level and really honing in on a certain sport, then we can tailor it a little more specific to that sport. So you know, thinking about like a baseball player, we're going to do a lot of shoulder care, keeping the shoulder healthy, obviously, because they're using that a lot throwing and want to avoid any injuries there. And then like hockey player might be different because hockey players, sometimes you see if there is an injury, it's going to be oftentimes like something around the hips. And then in a skate, they're kind of in that lean forward position. So it's kind of creating mm -hmm. like flexibility and mobility around the hip as well as strength to protect them or ankle mobility. So it can vary quite a bit depending on each athlete. Mm -hmm. uh, does that kind of answer your question? That was really helpful because I mean, that was me taking my son, for an example, he had access to multiple weight rooms, you know, at school, we belong to a health club, but that is what, at least from my view, really sets you guys apart is that you're really tailoring the program to the specific sports or goals of the kids in a way that feels very robust and logical and healthy and not so much like, oh, we just got to squat the most we possibly can. It's really about filling their toolbox with a healthy movement, like you mentioned. So that's, yeah, that totally did. Another thing is like, if you think about high school weight room, so even like a football team is pretty large. A lot of times that might be, you know, 30 kids in there and only one or two coaches to help mm -hmm. coach them out. And you know, like what an offensive or defensive lineman, like some of the bigger guys on the team should be doing versus what the fast running backs or defensive backs are doing should be different, right? Mm -hmm. But a lot of times they kind of all get lumped into the same pile. So we try to have an approach like each individual is a little bit different. And then the other thing you've mentioned, rather than just squatting heavy and bench pressing heavy, which all the kids <laughs> tend to like to do. It's like, okay, we're not lifting to be a, a bodybuilder mm -hmm. here. You're an athlete. You need to be mobile and explosive and fluid. So we do a lot of mobility work that will sprinkle in. Like if a certain kid has a specific area that is maybe a little tight, we'll sprinkle in some specific mobility for that athlete um, to help kind of loosen that area up. Yeah. That's so that's that is really, really cool and empowering to the kids. So why do you think this particular program is so engaging and popular with kids? Like you can look at your Instagram any day and there's always pictures and videos of <laughs> young kids like packing a gym, working hard in a weight room. And I don't ever remember people just eagerly going at young ages as a kid or teen begging to go and work out. What do you think is so unique or engaging that really draws the kids in? Yeah, that's a good question. So I think part of it you kind of hit on is like the atmosphere, right? You know, getting the loud music going mm -hmm. and working out around a lot of their peers. And some of the younger kids get to see what some of the older high school kids are doing with some of the more advanced progressions. Uh, so I think it's just a really cool, uplifting. Everyone's super positive and some of the older kids will help some of the younger kids, like give them some little advice. So it's it's just a really cool atmosphere, kind of high energy, high intensity. And then the other things that I think are really our bread and butter is one, you have to get the results, right? Mm -hmm. So like when a kid comes in, you know, where they were at on that day one, they should be seeing improvement by, you know, month three or, or after a couple of months and beyond that. So the results are obviously really important, getting faster, getting stronger, feeling better on the field, the court or the ice. But on top of that, I think it's like the relationships and connecting with the athletes and being kind of a mentor for them, not just in the performance side of it and like how to lift. Obviously, that is super important, but it's just like seeing how their day is going. Sometimes we had a crappy day and that might affect what we're doing in here, but it's empathizing with them and understanding where they're at 
and like, Hey, like we don't have to, you know, kill ourselves the day, like through the workout, but like, let's get a good sweat. You'll be feeling better by the time you leave. And just being, like I said, a positive mentor, that's going to help them excel in all aspects of their life. Yeah. That makes sense. I think you guys are really pulling that off because I have heard many kids between all my kids and their friends that are in your gym, them all kind of say that they think that they're your favorite. <laughs> so so you're, somehow these kids are all leaving thinking that they are Eric's favorite and your team's favorite. So uh, well done. <laughs> well, well done on that. They're all, all, all of our, all of the athletes are my favorite. I like them all. Okay. There you, there you go. Can you bring us kind of through your career path? You've had some cool stops along the way. Like it looks like you've been an intern with the Milwaukee Bucks and you did a stop at my high school alma mater, Nicolet, go Knights. And so how did you end up here? Yeah. How much time do you have? This could <laughs> go for a while, but I'll try to keep it relatively concise here. So I grew up in the Milwaukee area. I went to Homestead High School, played football, wrestled there. Growing up, I played like every sport under the sun, but then eventually I got a scholarship to play some college football at a division two school, Minnesota State University in Mankato. So I went out there for four years. After getting my degree, I moved back to the Milwaukee area and was kind of like bouncing around. Like you mentioned, I was a sport management major. So I did an internship. I was working with the Milwaukee Bucks doing some things, and that was back when they were horrible nothing like they were now so that was like interesting and then I got connected with a gym owner and a family friend was like oh you should talk to this guy he's the owner of this big health club and I was like I don't you know I didn't go to school for that and she's like don't worry about it just meet with him and he really liked me and he took me under his wing to mentor me and got me up to speed over a few months and I ended up getting certified through the National Strength and Conditioning Association. And they had a little athlete program within their health club. So I helped run those strength and speed classes on a very small scale, just with a handful of athletes in each group, as well as doing like personal training with general population and like boot camp type of classes and things like that. And I realized like the athlete side of things was really my passion. Like I really connected with the athletes. I really wanted to help them out and be a coach that I wish that I had or, or teach them things that I wish that I knew coming up, you know, middle school and high school. So through that, I had a connection at Nicolet High School, like you mentioned, and we set up a contract with them doing their strength and conditioning after school. So working with all of their different sports teams. And then we also later connected with Grafton High School doing something similar. So I was working over there in the Milwaukee area for about eight years. And during that time, I was kind of like, watching ETS from afar because my college teammate was Adam Thielen who now is on the Carolina Panthers used to be on the Minnesota Vikings so he's an NFL wide receiver and he started training with ETS when ETS was first established and I saw that they were spreading locations and I reached out to the owner Ryan Engelbert and connected with him a couple times just like to pick his brain and kind of see how he got to where he is and get some ideas from him. And then I also dropped a little like at the end of our talk, I was like, Hey, if you're ever like <laughs> looking for more coaches, I'm, I'm around, I'd be, I'd be super interested. And he's like, Oh no, not right now. And then eventually as they continued to grow, one of my other college teammates was working with ETS and he reached out and was like, Hey, they're looking to start expanding into the Wisconsin area. I know you've been working with athletes for eight years. Is this something you'd be interested in? I was like, yeah, totally hundred percent. So yeah. Then in 2021 is when I started training in with them up at their green Bay location. And then they sent me down there. Like, yep. We're going to open up a shop in Middleton. At that point, everything kind of went fast forward. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I'm running this whole facility by myself and figuring it out. And they were super supportive from our headquarters, giving me some guidance and everything, but it was a quick like transition. And all of a sudden, like here we are with 190 kids on membership here in Middleton. So That's awesome. yeah, that is, I guess that wasn't as concise as I was hoping for, but you got the full story. That's great. Yeah. I think it's helpful for people to know how the path can go. It doesn't necessarily mean you need to start out. If you want to work with kids, you want to you know, impact their lives. Like you don't have to know exactly where you're going to end up as you get started. So you just kind of let the path evolve. So I think that's, I think that was actually mm -hmm. really helpful to hear. So 
part of my work is owning a kids yoga business. And so we both are working to get kids moving in different ways. And the old thought used to be that young kids shouldn't lift weights. I was sort of brought up with this idea that it was like bad for your bones and bad for your joints and all of that. But I know that the thinking has changed on that, you know, over the past, what, like 10, 15, 20 years. And so I'm just curious, like, how mm -hmm. do you address this concern from parents? And can you shed some light on your perspective on this hot topic? Yeah, that's a really good question. And and one that we kind of face every once in a while. Like you said, thankfully, that has shifted and people understand that that isn't the case anymore. But uh, I think that actually came from some really old news article or something back like way back in the day that it can like stunt your growth mm -hmm. and this or that. But uh, it's actually like quite the opposite. Like it's good for your bone density and your joint health and injury prevention as long as it's done the proper way, right? That's like obviously the, the key thing, which is why I think like the program that we have, some parents will be hesitant. They're like, oh, you know, we're going to wait till he's like 14 to do strength training. And it's like really that 11, 12, 13 year old age is going to be better because that's before they get into that growth spurt. After the growth spurt, sometimes we're in that like clumsy stage and figuring out our new body. I know I was like super long and lanky and my friends told me I moved like a newborn giraffe. <laughs> so doing some like proper training can kind of combat that. I mean, people discussing like, oh, like, is that going to stunt their growth or, oh, that's not good for them to, to begin strength training at such an early age. If you think about the force that's put on their body when they're like, jumping out of a tree or jumping out of a playground and landing like that's going to be way more force on the body than it is like doing a body weight or like a lighter dumbbell squat or carrying the groceries in you know that's like mm -hmm. we had you have your kids do that when they're pretty young and that's basically like strength training mm -hmm. so there really is no risk and i think there's only benefit because any good coach is going to get them moving a little bit better than they were before they were doing that type of training. At a younger age, they have more neural plasticity, you know, similar to like learning a foreign language. It's easier when you're a younger kid versus when you're an adult. They have more neural plasticity so they can pick up on those movement patterns. And they might not be great when they first begin on their first day. They can pick up on those movement patterns a lot more quickly at the age of 11, 12 than they can at like 16, 17 when they're trying to learn it for the first time. Yeah, I think that's really true. And one thing that I've noticed is like just so much more awareness, even in my own, I didn't learn to do strength training until I was an adult and I was very flexible. And so for example, yoga, like I could go into extensions really well. I could do the wheels, I could do the bridges, all of that very easily. And so I was like, oh, I'm achieving in this sort of that, like feeling, oh, I can get there. But in reality, I was doing a lot of damage to my spine because I wasn't engaging any muscles in that. And that's one of the big reasons why I am so now invested in my kids continuing to train with you is because they really are learning these things at such a young age. One of my kids, as you know, does a lot of tumbling. And so I'm so glad that she's learning the strength to engage her core in a way. And it's not just like throwing her body into it without that mechanics awareness. And like you mentioned, so I'll tell you one funny story. Yesterday, we were pulling up along our house and we couldn't quite pull up to the mailbox to get something. And so my my youngest, who is 13, she was like, oh, I'll just reach out the window and get it. And so I'm like, oh, we could just park the car and walk to it. She's like, no, no, no. So I was pulled up really far. She extended her entire body out the window and nudged her feet underneath the console. And my son was watching. He's like, what are you doing? And she was able to like I, I don't know, just like suspend herself to, to go reach the mailbox. And my son was like, well, how did you do that? And she was like, my hamstrings are really strong. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> That's awesome. it, was, it was so funny. So they're just like, even that she would understand her body in that way because she's working on your gym is, is really, really cool. So thanks for addressing that sort of controversial topic. I appreciate that. Well, that's a big thing as adults, as we get older, like we're not training for sports anymore. Like we're training for life. Mm -hmm. So I think about like my friends ask me all the time to like move. So it's like carrying heavy boxes and weird objects and moving yeah. your body. So part of the reason I do strength training is I can like manipulate my body in a weird ways, like how you said your daughter did yeah. there, but also like having, you have the form, the proper form, learning it when you're a kid in right. a facility like ours. You have that for the rest of your life. So then as you're training, when you get older in college and post-college, you're doing things the proper way and you're not like learning off of a YouTube video or something right. like that.
So one question I have is if there's a parent who's listening and they're thinking, I really would like this for my kid, but I, you know, am unsure of whether they have the like base fitness level. I'm sort of worried that they aren't an athlete yet or at all, but they want their kid to be active and they think their kid would enjoy it. Is there a base fitness level that people need to come in? What would you recommend? Yes. Although a lot of the kids we train are athletes, we still have a handful and actually a decent amount that our parents will reach out and they'll say, well, like, I really want to get my kid interested or or teach them how to train properly and introduce them to weightlifting, but they're not, they're not much of an athlete or so. I don't know if I can send them to you. And I tell them, at least come in and check it out. doesn't matter if you don't play a sport. We can still introduce you to proper training and create you a program that are going to be things, like I said before, you can carry with you to when eventually you're going to the gym on your own. You at least like kind of know your way around the weight room. You know a lot of the different movements and what muscles to work and the proper form on those things. So. I would always say at the very least, you can come in, check us out with a free evaluation and I can, you know, give you all the information and all the details about what we can do for you. And then after that, you can make a decision like, yeah, that sounds great or maybe not. That's awesome. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Okay. So if somebody is like, okay, I, I'm bought in, Eric sold me the idea that my kid should lift weights and strength train and do speed training and they don't live near, well, your gym or any of the ETS gyms, like what should someone look for in an athlete training program? You were talking about the importance of having a good coach. So what should someone look for if they're exploring options? If it's a younger athlete or younger kid that's 12, 13, it's the first time they're doing any sort of strength training, they should definitely have someone with them, even whether that's a parent or a coach or, or a virtual coach on a Zoom call. Because kids are tricky because sometimes you'll show them the proper form and you'll watch like their first rep or two, a couple reps, and they're moving really good. Then you turn your back to help another kid, you turn right back around and all of a sudden they're doing something like, whoa, how did you like? get from what we were doing to that. So they just need the repetition of hearing the proper cues, getting into those proper positions and kind of building those motor patterns. So, I mean, I would tell them it's worth the drive to ETS, but (laughs) obviously for some people that's, that's tougher. Or if there just not, isn't one in the nearby area, you know, that's tricky. I, I would try to find like a coach or someone that knows what they're doing, at least for their first few times to kind of build a baseline. Okay. Awesome. That makes sense. So one thing that I love, and I know my kids also love, is that you're always celebrating kids and their progress. A lot of it is on social media. You have your Friday feature posts, which is like the supreme win for kids where you highlight a youth Mm -hmm. athlete. And you also make these really cool video reels where the kids watch to see if they're in them because they look strong and cool in them. And then you also (laughs) like physically show up at their sporting events around town, which is so above and beyond and it really build the kids up. And I'm just wondering, is that an ETS thing? Is that an Eric Grimm thing? Is that kind of both? Yeah, that's a good question. So with the social media side of things, you just want people to see, get a little taste of what the atmosphere is like in here so that their other friends can see it. Just to have an idea of like the type of training we do Mm -hmm. or like We do our why Wednesday post is like why we do a certain type of training or why we approach things with this philosophy. And to be honest, when I first started with ETS, I was like, I did not like, uh, you know, like taking the pictures like in the gym or the videos because I'm like, I would rather just be coaching or like interacting and talking with the kids. But I totally see the value because the kids love seeing themselves Uh on there. Parents (laughs) like seeing it. Other kids see their friends working out. So it's pretty cool. And then as far as like getting out in the community, like I just love that. I really like what we do in the gym and I really like learning about the human body and I'm passionate about that, which is really cool. Like having a group of kids in here working on themselves, but the reason they're in here working on themselves is so that they can go, you know, dominate on the field, on the court, on the ice. So I want to see them in action in their, in their element competing and then kind of giving them feedback, like, That was awesome seeing you, you know, you can relate things of what we're doing in the gym to movements that they're doing on the, on the court. And it's just a lot of fun, like interacting with the parents, you know, seeing the kids or going to like 
even going to like the varsity football game on Friday nights. And then there's like the middle school student section and all of them are, Oh, Eric, what's up, Eric? It's just fun, fun seeing them all out there, seeing our ETS fam out there. Well, it makes a big difference and the kids love it. And the best way to get kids to share a post is put up a video of them looking strong and cool. Like that, that's going to get reshared mm-hmm. immediately. So, so it's, it's also very smart of you. It can be tricky though. Cause sometimes like kids are, Oh, I look terrible in that picture. And I'm like, you're not supposed to look all glamorous and glowing like when you're training, you know, it's okay to look like you're tough and you're exerting yourself like, so that's always funny. It, yeah, they watch those reels, make see if they're in there. So, okay. <laughs> so also as one of the parents of the kids that you train, I also have to say that I really appreciate that you hold them to a really high standard for their character and like you have them do planks for being late. And I heard that you gave a stern talk to the high school aged kids about being respectful to the college interns this past summer. And you made it very clear that you were not going to put up with any shenanigans from them on that front. And that was just really impressive. And I have to imagine that any given 7 p.m. weekday, you have a gym full of teenagers and you deal with behaviors and language and that kind of thing. So I'm curious how you handle this and how you make the gym so safe for everyone, but also still, like you were talking about, create that relaxed culture. Yeah. So it can be at times tricky, but just creating that standard and that culture of like what you're trying to achieve. And like I said before, obviously we want to get kids faster and stronger and more explosive for their sport, but like for everyone, eventually sports will end. Mm -hmm. So the other side of it is like, trying to help create quality human beings, you know, trying Mm -hmm. to teach them those life skills. I think we all sign our kids up for sports to teach them, you know, obviously to keep them active, but also to teach them some of those lifelong skills of communication, teamwork, discipline, accountability. And those are all things that we try to instill in them and here. And that can be a lot of different ways we do that. But like, you know, being on time, Some of the kids can't control that because they're not driving. (laughs) And then I'm like, well, then we can, let's talk to your mom or dad. Like, Instead of you doing the two minute plank, maybe they should be doing it. (laughs) Hey, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But like little things, little details, like when you put dumbbells back, they should be touching its partner with the numbers facing up. And some kids will be like, Eric, that's ridiculous. That's not a big deal. And I'm like, well, if it's not a big deal, you can do it because it takes two seconds. And it's not about you and you taking your extra two seconds. It's about the person after you and you're setting them up for success and it keeps everything neat and organized. So it's just kind of explaining that like big picture mentality to them and just holding them accountable to that higher standard. I love it. Yeah. I I mean, it it comes across and not quite with the cleaning up at home, but I'm glad to know that they're cleaning up at the gym (laughs) for for you. And also like another aspect that I think is really cool about what you're offering is I know as a female, the weight room can sometimes feel, make you feel exposed. And I really love that you are creating a culture in your gym of respect. And so that all, all my kids, like son and my daughters get like a really great start on what behavior should look like and feel like and what that gym should look like and feel like. And so I just am really grateful that you've set that up in such an intentional way because that's such a great start for them. Definitely. So what's next for you and for ETS? Are there other professional or personal goals that you're working towards or are your hands just totally full with your weight room of kids? (laughs) Yeah. So the big thing is now that we've been here for coming up on three years, which is crazy. We're a little more established in the area and people have heard about our names or, you know, so there's a lot of like word of mouth around the community, which is awesome. That's bringing in new kids. And obviously some kids graduate and then more new kids are coming in. So it's just continuing to, you know, be a positive place for kids in this community and continuing to grow, you know, as much as we can hold and Once we can't do that at this facility, we'll go to a bigger facility and hire more coaches so we can make sure the kids are getting the same quality of coaching as we grow. But I think just, you know, really the the biggest thing is just like making a positive impact in the community and with the kids that are 
in our four walls. And that's about it. As far as me, it's just the, the biggest thing that I will sometimes stay up in the middle of the night thinking about is as we grow, it's like, for me, it's got to be the same quality. Every kid that comes through our doors, it doesn't matter if it was when we only had 50 athletes or when we have 300 athletes, like they all should have the same experience, no matter how good of an athlete they are. They're all being encouraged and kind of coached up in the same way. So it's the same quality product for everyone. Well, our listeners are people who work with and serve youth, and this is the perpetual, our perpetual deliberation. So uh, you're in good company with that middle of the night worry. So well, that's, <laughs> that's awesome. All right. This is the question that I ask everybody at the end. If you could wave a magic wand on behalf of kids in 2024, what would you wish for them and what messages would you tell them? I think especially a lot of kids around this area, it's a very affluent community, which is great. Like I love living in Middleton, but I think kids should be grateful for what they have and all of the things they have access to because a lot of kids around the world don't have access to those things or don't get the opportunities that they might have. And sometimes it can be taken from you quickly. Life can have some nasty turns and we face adversity sometimes. So just being grateful for you know, all the things you have in your life and all the opportunities you have and making the most out of those. I love that. That was a great answer. So Eric, thank you so much for joining me today on the podcast and for being in it for youth. Can you please tell listeners where they can reach out to you, find more out about ETS or contact you if they want to ask questions or bring their kids to you? Yes. So we start any athlete or any interested family. You can sign up for a free evaluation. You can give us a call and I can help schedule that. You can also do it on our website. We have our evaluation schedule on there. It's etsperformance.com and you'll click on the get started tab. Otherwise, if you're interested in seeing what type of training we do or what it looks like, give us a follow on Instagram or Facebook. It's just ETS West Madison, I think, dot WI, but just ETS West Madison on Instagram. We post all like little insights on our training videos and like you said, highlighting certain athletes. But yeah, I think those are, those are the main ones. Awesome. Well, we'll link that in the show notes. Thank you again for joining me and to all the listeners. Thank you so much for staying tuned to this and we'll be back next time with another inspiring interview. In It For Youth is a Lit Path Studios production. Music is by Inspiring Audio and Pond5. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And to learn more about this show and all other shows on the network, visit www.litpathstudios.com.